Hey y'all, it's your girl Monet and welcome back to The Exchange Rate, a show that's been described as warm, sweet, inviting, sensational, tantalizing. But enough about my WAP. <laughs> I'm always excited about our guests, but today even more than usual, y'all. Our first guest is unequivocally the best part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes, I said it. Candy Barres is here. And later, my New York City soul sister, the yo to my mama, my all-stars queen, Miss Cracker, is also here. But first, let's get up in the gig. Hit it! Okay, I have to tell y'all, um, honey, this brown skin girl, highly melanated look, I am feeling it. Girl, I feel like I can get me some rough trade, a hood ass nigga to come up in here and choke me up in this goddamn apartment. No tea, no chain. And um, I finally finished Black is King, and it is really good. Now, I know last time we had the show, I said I haven't watched it through, and I put it off, but I think I, like, put it off in, like, a low. You know, like, in every movie, no matter if it's an episode of whatever it is, no, whatever movie, there's always, like, that moment where you're like, ugh, there's so much of this movie left, or you're, like, a little bored, and I think that's where I got to. But I finished the whole thing, and it's fierce. I can't believe Beyonce shaded Michelle by not including her in the film. And y'all can say what y'all want. Kelly was in there. The fact that she omitted Michelle and not putting her in there, I think it's a little shady. Do y'all think so? I think it's shady. Um, but yeah, the movie, the Blackest King is Fierce, is great. And yes, people are talking shit about it, but people are gonna talk shit whether you're doing good or whether you're doing bad. So you just keep on moving on and do your do. Amen? Um, I've also started intermittent fasting. If you don't know what that is, I can eat for eight hours of the day and then I have to fast for the other, for the other 16. And it has been changing my life. But bitch, the first three days was mother tucking hell. I hated everyone. I hated everything. And it was really hard. And I, I do advise intermittent fasting. Now again, go by your doctor, di dietary, dietary, di dietary, dietary. Go, go by your, your doctor's dietary nutritional orders. But it is turning me out in a week and uh, in a week and a day. I've already lost five pounds. You can tell by this collarbone right here. Look at it. Look at check. Look look at her. Y'all see that? That's called fasting, honey. Mm hmm And um, I had my first cheat day on Saturday. And let me tell y'all, I went in. First of all, I woke up at the at the blissful hour of one p.m. I made me two bacon egg and cheeses on some Ezekiel bread that is like an egg bacon. Um, um, cheddar cheese on one of the on one of the sandwiches and white cheddar on the other one. <laughs> Chef's kiss. And then I took a little a little nap. And then I rented a city bike. And then I and then I wanted to get pizza. And I love Domino's, but for some reason I was craving Uno's. Y'all know y'all know about Uno's. Full tea Uno's is better than pizza. Uh, Uno's pizza is better than Domino's pizza. But I think the hair there. So I biked down to, to to Chicago Grill, got me Uno's little deep dish pizza, and then I. <laughs> Biked up to Levain, and I got me some Levain chocolate chip cookies. Which, do you know that each Levain chocolate chip cookie has 600 calories? <laughs> 600 calories in one motherfucking cookie. Well, bitch, I had two, and I don't regret it at all. I feel great. I look stunning. Intermittent fasting is the wave of the future. And uh, before I get into the first story, I do want to say really quick, I have, I've had a small change of heart about the Ellen thing. I know last week I was, like, pretty hard on Ellen, but I've been thinking about it. I'm like... You know what? Yes, she's mean, and I get it. She's a mean lady, but you cannot ignore all of the amazing thing Ellen's, the amazing things Ellen has done for the community. Ellen was like one of the first people to put it out there. Her career was like over for like four years because she came out as being gay on her show. Like, arguably, if Ellen would have never done that, maybe I might not be sitting here in front of y'all on YouTube. Like, you no, know, you just don't know. And I think trying to erase Ellen's amazing work for the community is really shady because those are milestones and giants and that we needed to be fought for us to be here. You know, no matter how big or how small her contributions are, to me, they were major in the grand scream of progression for LGBTQ folk, and we should remember that. And also trying to, like, uh, cr trying to crush Ellen for the transgression of her male executives at her thing is a little misogynistic. We, c we can't be blaming women for what men are doing. Like, this, this shady-ass uh, dude, Kevin, whatever his name is, He's doing these actions on his own, and he should be held accountable. But holding Ellen accountable to his work is a is a very nuanced thing. We shouldn't just want to crush Ellen right away. That's all I have to say. Um, and I'm so yeah. Moving on. First story. This hair is 
I can't wear these rings with this hair. Just get caught. I'm just pulling out this yarn. This natural. Oh, what? I mean. Wait, I need to put so I can hide this shoulder. This shoulder, this shoulder ain't losing. <laughs> ain't losing five pounds on this shoulder. I'm trying to hide her right here. Um, wet ass pussy girl. Megan the Stallion and, <laughs> and Cardi B have come out with wet ass pussy. And girl, I'm obsessed. I I feel like my life has changed. It is everything. The, it, it came out on August 7th, and it already has over 69 million views on YouTube. Crazy. And um, But in like the first 24 hours, it had like 27 million views, and that is the biggest debut for a female collaboration on in YouTube history ever. So that is major, 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 major. Congrats to those two ladies. Um, but people are shading them because of the Kylie Jenner cameo y'all are shading y'all are forgetting about <laughs> about the two amazing women of color in this video and you're focusing on kylie jenner which cardi b is defending kylie Ky cardi b is like I, I i put kylie in it it was a little cameo and kylie has been really nice to me our husbands get along her mom has been really helpful like with advice for my career so you know kylie is cool i mean Cardi is cool with kylie and she put in the video like it was maybe all of seven seconds and for what it's worth Kylie turned it. She looked hot. It was fierce. When she opened that door, that little... She, so she opens the door, and that slight look to the camera like... Bitch, I was like, yes! What ass pussy! That was so cute. Like, it was fierce. Like, it was it was major. You can't be mad at the girl for turning it out. You know what I mean? And that shit reassured me more that they try to act like this bitch's body is real. Honey... The BBLification of all of it. I'm like, girl, you, them hips was not made in America, honey. They were made in a lab in Turkey and then pumped into your booty because that is not real. But she still looks great. I digress. Um, and yeah, and people are also mad that so, y'all are, so this is a really weird dichotomy. Y'all are mad that we're focusing on Kylie, but you choosing to not, but y'all are choosing to not celebrate Normani. Everyone's like, yeah, but why is Kylie Jenner trending and why is Normani not? It's like, bitch, why aren't you talking about Normani? You know what I mean? And Cardi said, Cardi said this. She's like, Normani is one of the best female artists that dances. Like, she, like she dances for her fucking ass off. Why would she open a door? Please tell me how that would make sense. So people are like, oh, Normani should have walked down the hallway and opened the door. And then Kylie would have been dancing. But then y'all have been mad that Kylie's dancing and Normani just opened the door. You know what I mean? Like, you just can't win for losing. And I think the, the, the video is great. It is a really bold, powerful statement about women's empowerment. And it's just, I, I love it. I'm obsessed. And in a few weeks, there might be some, um... And obviously the Christian community has a lot to say. Um, ben Shapiro, ugh. And Representative James Bradley said this, hashtag WAP, which I heard accidentally, made me want to pour holy water in my ears and feel sorry for future girls if this is their role model. Evangelicals and conservative and Christians who act like they don't fucking suck dick, like, I'm like, y'all are part of the problem. This is why y'all ain't doing this with your wives. So you go to Moscow and you rent a hooker to piss on you for $20 because you're so afraid of your own sexuality and you're so afraid of women embracing their sexuality. Like, y'all, this is literally the problem. Like, Ben Shapiro, shut your ass up. Go talk to your wife, your girlfriend. I don't know. I don't know what he. I don't really know nothing about Ben Shapiro, but I know he heard it. Accident. He heard it. How do you hear it accidentally? You know what I mean? I know, Mama. You went on YouTube and you probably typed in Ebony Enchantress Goddess. Who knows what your your old ass is typing in? And 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 WAP for uh, came on your screen and you enjoyed it. Just say you enjoyed it. You got you you got to talk shit. Anyway, congratulations, Cardi and Megan. Y'all are fierce. Y'all are turning the party work. Mulan, Mulan, Mulan. Not Mulan the drag queen. Mulan the movie girl. Um, in case y'all don't know, Mulan was supposed to come out in March. I think March 27th. I remember when we when when uh, Manila, Nina, Nina West and I filmed the commercial for Trolls. That same night, Manila like went to like the red carpet event for Mulan. So it was definitely March. But with COVID, a lot of things have been pushed back. And now Disney's finally announcing that they're going to be premiering Mulan on their app, Disney+. Plus. However, here's the catch. You have to pay 30 additional dollars to watch it starting September 4th. And this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think that's right. I think that makes sense. Think about it. I can't speak for everywhere else, but I know in New York. In New York, if you go to see an IMAX 3D movie, you're off the bat for the ticket. You're coming off... Oh, here. 
You know when you move and like it just hits. Oh, there's the light. I can see it. Whatever. Oh, I got it. Whew. Um, off the bat in New York City, you go to an IMAX movie. That's twenty six dollars out of your pocket. That's just that's just for the ticket. Now you fast forward to um, you get you know you're getting snacks, you're getting popcorn, like whatever. Like so, a family of three. Like, a mom and a dad and a kid, or a dad and a dad and a kid, and a mommy and a mommy and a kid, whatever it is, like, you're spending close to about 70, 60 bucks just going to see the movie, you know what I mean? So I think them putting it for $30, I think that's like a nationwide average. Also, you don't have to buy it. You can wait until it's available in like a few months, just like you would any other movie, you know what I mean? So people are up in arms, they're like, how dare they charge $30? It's like, then don't buy it. Don't watch it. Like, Disney is not... <laughs> Making you, it's not this like mandatory $30 charge you have to do to see the movie. Just wait till it comes out like you would have any other movie. And um, it's obviously this is going to be the case in lots in, in a lot of America. However, if movie theaters are open, are open in your town, like it's for places like New Zealand where they have literally zero COVID cases in over 100 days, movie theaters are open there so you can like go watch it at the movie theater. But this is just an option for people at home who can't go to the movies to watch it. So, which makes sense. You know what I mean? And the Disney CEO, Bob Shapak, not, not the drag queen, Bob Shapak, um, said that the pandemic has forced the company to think of different ways to, like, generate money. Like, they in, in the first quarter of the year, they reported um, a $5 billion loss. That is a lot of coins. Although, Disney, they got it. I mean, they ain't hurting for $5 billion, but, I mean, that is no small... That, that ain't chump change. That's a lot of money. So, like, I get it. It's trying to think of ways. Again, you don't have to buy it, all right? Like, you don't. I don't think it's complicated. People are so upset at Disney. If you if you want to see the movie and you have it, great. I know I'm going to buy it. I mean, I'm the kind of, I, Again, I go to the movies in the city, and at the movies, I'm buying the nachos, which is $14 by itself, and then I'm going to get me the large soda, which is another $8. So, you look at my tickets, what's that? 14 plus 8 is $24. $22. So $22 on top of my $26. So every time I go to the movies, for, I'm already spending a minimum of $48. Like every time I go to the movies. You know what I mean? So spending $30 when I can be at home and just watch it. A, a friend of mine did have a good idea. Like if they like gave like a voucher for Uber Eats, like $10 off like popcorn or something, like maybe that could be a way to kind of subsidize it. I don't know. That is adding even more shit because then you end up spending more money because you get it, you're getting more than popcorn, whatever the case may be. Anyway, I'm all here for it. Go watch Mulan if you got the thirty dollars, and if you don't, wait till it's free. Um, another story that I want to talk about real quick is it's something that we've all it's like the big elephant in the room. Like we all know the whole RuPaul deleting all of his social media. People have been really wondering like where is RuPaul amidst among you know with Black Lives Matter? Like where why isn't RuPaul saying anything? And um, sources close to Ru are saying that things like Black Lives Matter are, like, really overwhelming for Ru. And, you know, he, you know, Ru gets a lot of backlash and negativity for, um, for you know, for things like drivers for not having a, a, a more trans contestants or AFAB contestants, all that stuff. So, like, I guess he, like, shuts down and, you know... And all diversity for Drag Race, like, the show itself is pretty diverse. Like, if you look at all the winners, out of all the winners, 12 of twelve of the season's winners, seven of them are people of color. If you look at the all-star winners, two of us are people of color. Trixie is Native American. Um, and, you know, the cast for each season is pretty, pretty, pretty diverse. You've had, you have eight transgender women who, who have been on Drag Race. And, um... Could the show do more? Absolutely. You know, could the show open up their horizons more? Absolutely. But... As as looking at it now, the show is a pretty diverse show. And, you know, and I guess Ru has a hard time with this. Again, I'm not RuPaul. I don't know his life. I don't know his feelings. I don't know his emotions. But I guess it could be... I, I, I'm kind of going the route of the Tamar Braxton story, story we, we talked about. Like, if I can imagine the amount of hate and mean things that I get, being called a black monkey and a, uh, uh, people sending me pictures of monkeys with crowns on, talking about that was me when I won, I can only imagine how much has multiplied for someone like Ru who is a bajillion times more famous than me or Tamar Braxton. You know what I mean? So... I think it's a really tricky thing, and maybe he thought the best way to, like, mitigate that was just, like, shut down his social media so he's not getting mean comments or DMs or whatever it was. And, and you know, people, like, are like, Ru should be out there in the front lines. Ru should be protesting. Ru should be saying something about Black Lives Matter. 
First of all, I'm not in the business of white people telling black people how to be activists and how to speak up. Like, as a white person, you don't get to tell me how I should be an act, how I act, how I am, how I choose to be an activist for black people. Like, you have your own crosses to bear. You are about yourself. Don't tell black people how to activate. Like, that's not your job. Like, Rue has a long history of his own activism. Like, Rue has, Rue uh, was part of the Viva, Gam, the Viva Glam campaign for AIDS awareness. They've raised over four hundred million dollars um rue used to protest the kkk back in the back in the early 90s rue uh was at the the, the women's and gay liberation march like rue is an old black man who was alive in the 70s 80s and 90s and is still i'm not saying like he's dead oh lord jesus christ uh but yeah rue has had a lot of activism a lot of fighting fighting for black folk and queer folk in his life so I don't think we get to call him out and say, how dare you not do this? You know what I mean? That's his own demons. That's his own struggle. And we don't get to do that. And as far as people saying that Rue doesn't care about the girls on the show, I have been on Drag Race two times and I've had two separate meetings with Rue outside of Drag Race, the Drag Race thing. And they have all been good experiences. Every time Rue would use Rue would come into the workroom, Rue would say, hey, girls, oh, girl, make a snippy comment. Oh, girl, you wearing that outfit today? Like, fun little bibbity bops like that. And um, Rue did this show. Rue did my talk show. And I could tell y'all, Rue was so sweet, so kind. I walked into the green room to meet him. And he was like, Monet Exchange. You got a talk show, girl? And, like, and it was, like, fun conversation. Like, it's never anything, like, I can't talk to Rue directly. And, you know, going on to Drag Race... I guess some girls go on and they feel like they're about to make this, like, personal bond with Rue. He's going to be, like, your mentor forever. But I know, being someone, I wasn't new to film and TV. Like, I know how TV works, you know, even before Drag Race. So I wasn't expecting that. And that was my expectation. So for people who have that expectation, I can get why they feel like Rue's mean. But I feel like, girl, he put me on an international television show. And he's a reason why I have this platform now. So Rue has made ways for over 150 of us who have platforms that have our voices. So I feel like Rue is doing good work and he doesn't owe anyone an explanation why he ain't speaking out. Girl, that's her business. And, um, you know, just like let the girl live. Someone who is speaking out and having a big dick energy flex. Honestly, I think this next person has a massive dick energy. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey does not play games. When Oprah is ready, when Oprah does shit, she does it major, 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 major. And um, she flexed real hard on Black Lives Matter, girl. Oprah went on down to Louisville and she um, put Breonna Taylor's image on 26 billboards in Louisville to, to, to correspond with her 26 years of life before it was sadly taken away by um, by um, Louisville police. And, you know, this is the first time... Well, because Oprah has been on the cover of Old Magazine. This is the first time in the 20 years Old Magazine has been around that they have put um, someone other than Oprah on the cover of the magazine. So this is really major. Obviously, we are all, all, all still trying to um, get justice for Breonna Taylor and to see a powerful woman like Oprah Winfrey, black woman like Oprah Winfrey speaking out, you know... Honestly, as a lowly individual in this world, I don't know what else we can do to make this government in Louisville, like, open their eyes and to, like, have actual forward movement in action. Because I feel like every day I am seeing the um, arrest of cops to kill Brianna, but it just seems like Louisville, they're just literally not listening or they're choosing to ignore us and what we and the justice that... A lot of the country, and honestly, even the world is requesting. So it's been really interesting. But to see someone like Oprah using her platform in such a major way, I think it's really fierce. And she said this, Brianna Taylor, she was just like me. She was just like you. And like everyone who dies unexpectedly, she had plans. Plans for a future filled with, with responsibility and work and friends and laughter. I think about Brianna Taylor often. Imagine if three unidentified men burst into your home while you were sleeping and your partner fired a gun to protect you, and then mayhem. What I know for sure, we can't be silent. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep on posting. You can keep on posting. And if you're ever confused about what you can do to continue the fight, here are some steps. One, sign petitions. Um, there's one at WhiteHouse.gov, and um, Color of Change has some petitions out to demand justice for, for Brianna. Two, call Kentucky's Attorney General. Call the call call the Louisville's mayor, uh, Louisville's interim police chief. 
Um, and like and like demand justice for Brianna. Um, number three, what you can do is donate to the Louisville Community Bail Fund to aid protesters fighting in Brianna's hometown. And for hashtag say her name, um, hashtag arrest the cops that kill Brianna Taylor. Yes, it seems like no one is listening, but honestly, you can only ignore a tick. Uh, you can only you can only ignore a ticking clock for so long. At some point, that ticking gets to you, and you have to do something. So I think that we just got to keep on hashtagging girl and keep on calling the attorney generals and keep on doing the things to um, to get justice for Brianna. So thank you, Oprah, and thank you to all the major celebs like using their platform to still talk about it and keep the conversation going. We got it. Girl, the sheer power that this woman holds in her fingertips alone, Thanos could never. Singer, songwriter, executive producer, restaurant mogul, HBIC on The Real Housewives. The list goes on. Welcome, Candy. Thank you. That was a good <laughs> introduction. <laughs> I mean, and they're all facts, 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 and facts. How are you, my dear? I'm doing great. I mean, as good as I can be, you know, with what's going on in this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're making the best of all of it. Um, I had this, you, we were, before we all started, we were talking about the weather in Atlanta, and it is hot everywhere in America, but I can only imagine how disgustingly hot it is in Atlanta. Yes, it's like, it's like really on fire right now. And then plus like this week we're supposed to have rain, but it's kind of crazy because it's still super hot. And then you don't right. know if it's going to rain. They say it's going to rain, but if they, it rains, it's like for a little while and mm -hmm. it's like blazing. You know, last summer I was in Atlanta and um, I was, I went, I literally flew there to do, get some tattoos by Maya Bailey. Shout out Maya Bailey. I love him in Atlanta. And okay. I try to go to OLG. But the lines, I, there was the, the weight was crazy. It's still impossible. I'm like, I need to be friends with Candy. I just, I just want a meal. That's Next time you just gotta have to text me, and then we gotta <laughs> figure that out. Um, right now it's even more crazy because we've actually taken out some of the tables so that it could be, you know, not as crowded and a little oh, bit okay. distance, and so which makes the waits longer on the weekends, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, it's not our fault. We're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> with COVID, did you guys get like really like was it did, did it really mess you guys up? Like how was the whole COVID uh, yes. and OLG? It really messed us up at first, especially because um, you know, when everybody did the shutdown at first in Atlanta, um, we shut our restaurant down and we really wanted to follow the protocol that the mayor right. had set. So like we totally closed our doors. Um after a while we started doing takeout, but we were kind of closed for like two months. And, wow. you know, for us, that's crazy because, you know, we normally have a lot of people coming in right. and out there. So I just was like, oh, my God, what is happening to our business? But we eventually opened back up. OK, good, good. And then, you know, so Kelly, what do you think about your career and your life? It is obviously insane. It's very super accomplished. But the younger kids that watch Housewives of Atlanta who know you through that lens don't know. Like, you are a super accomplished musician. You've written some of the biggest hits that we know. And it's just like, do you, does that really, does, does that get you tight that these young kids don't be throwing respect on your name sometimes? Cause they don't you know. know. Not really. I mean, I feel like the people who need to know, know, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and every now and then, you know, we drop a little reminder now. Remember. <laughs> but it is kind of crazy to me that it's like now I, I've been on Housewives for over 10 years now. Yeah. It's seven years for me. And so it feels kind of like people, you know, I don't know. They want to put me in a box of a reality store, a really <laughs> reality star, but I feel like I'm way more than just a reality star. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And well, you started back out. You started back with Escape, and that was like your, your your big break. Why did you transition? Like, why did why after Escape did you transition to songwriting, or or were you doing that all along? Oh, you mean in the group? What made yeah, you in the group? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So. We, for those that don't know, um, we, our group, we started when we were like still in high school. Okay. Right. So, um, Jermaine Dupree was the one who signed us. I got our record deal when I was six, you know, we got our record deal when I was 16 years old. So he kind of like led the way with all the production and writing. We, and we were just mm. like, happy to be there. So we did write a little bit here and there, but it wasn't like we were the main creatives on the songs or whatever. Got you, got I, you. That was something that I always wanted to do more of. 
So when our group started like kind of falling apart, I had talked to Tiny. I was like, yo, like we need to figure out what we're going to do first of all, because it looks like we not had, you know, our group not going to be together. Yeah. Um, we knew one of our group members was going to go solo. And I was like, what are we going to do? So I was like, we need to work on a project with just the two of us. And then yeah. we need to write the songs ourselves. So when we, you know, shot the deal, we can say, hey, you know, we are capable of being the creator for our own project. Yeah, and that's how the Rubs came about. That was on our demo tape. Was it really? <laughs> yes, it was Tiny. We had Tiny song first. Oh, it was the demo. Like demo. Dope. Yeah. So um, from there, after that song got picked up, it was like, I just was like, okay, I'm just going to keep writing and hopefully just be able to write for everybody. I just, you know, that was just on the go. Yeah, yeah. and sync. Pink, which I, no shade, because Pink is fierce. I think Pink is a, is a dope vocalist. But when you yeah. wrote, um, there you go. What was it? You look at there you go, looking pitiful, just because, just because I, let I let you go. go. Yes. yes. <laughs> did you think it was gonna be? Did you think Pink would be major as she was? I had no clue. Right. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I mean, I thought she was dope <laughs> because when I first met Pink, um, she was actually in a group. And they, she was oh. signed, yeah, she was signed to LaFace Records as in a group. They were like, <laughs> no white oh, like girls that can sing R&B, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, okay, she's dope. And then they decided <laughs> to take her solo. And that's when Shakespeare and I, Shakespeare and I, we worked with her or whatever. But she still had that urban edge when we worked with her. Right. Her first album. I had no clue that she was going to become this huge pop phenomenon. Right. But, Hey, I'm just glad to be a part of the, her early beginning. <laughs> I had her first hit. I get yeah, all you did. <laughs> and yeah. then you fast forward to, to 2017, and people are trying to shade you with Ed Sheeran. Okay, so when I heard this story, Candy, I okay. was like gagging. Um, so for, for, the, for the viewers who don't know, Ed Sheeran has that song, Shape of You, but yeah. it heavily samples no scrubs. I want to know, were you the one who heard it? Were you driving in your car down 85? And you were like, wait a minute. If this melody sounds no, hella no, familiar. No, no, no. Much props to Ed Sheeran. He actually did it the proper, well, he started off doing it in the proper way. As soon as okay. I get did the record, he knew it was going to be on the album. He actually reached out to us oh. um, to start negotiating our percentage in the song. Well, not okay, him, work. it's people. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, yeah, yeah, the pope. So now it wasn't, the negotiations were not done. Like, so we kind of figured like, okay, well maybe he's not going to use it. But then the song came <laughs> out and all the fans was like, oh, this is the song. <laughs> <laughs> but he had already reached out to us. So he had already started the process. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just want to make sure, I'm about to end share, don't be, don't be trying to slight this, these black, no, beautiful, creative women. It, gotcha. Nah, they, they actually hit us up. Okay, cool, cool. And then I, you know, recently I had came and shown the show um a, a few months ago, and me and her we were, t- we were chatting about you know the state of R and B and the state of music, and mm-hmm. she had some really interesting words. She she feels like artists like R and B artists like the younger kids they don't put out like great bodies of work anymore. Like back in the day, you could put on an album and listen from top to end and be in a whole vibe, mm-hmm. a whole mood. Do you agree? Um, not necessarily. Okay, and I feel like. It's different, obviously. The The music of today is obviously totally different than the music of the 90s. But if you want to go to, you know, that, I mean, the music of the 90s is totally different than the 80s and the 70s. True, true. You know what I'm I mean, when I was younger and we was doing our thing, you know, the people from the 70s was like, oh, they don't make music like we used to. You know, they yeah, were yeah. live bands and stuff. So I think it always is going to, music is going to forever change. Yeah. And it's going to reflect what's happening at, you know, whatever time it's in, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I I understand what she's saying, but I just feel like it's a lot of dope artists out here right now. Yeah. You just have to find them. I'm a person, I always like to look into the what's breaking um, playlist, like on different, you know, like for me, like Apple Music, if I'm listening and I go to their breaking list on the R&B section, it's like all the new breaking artists with their listening, you know, what they're putting out. Yeah, yeah. So that I know what's going on so I can check out, like, all the new sounds, you know, the vibes or whatever. It's, everybody's different. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel that. I feel that. I, and, and now that, you know, I just had my 30th birthday and I do find myself being like, man, these 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 songs just aren't the same anymore. So I get it. I get it. I get hey, it. I, I mean, I'm biased, so I'm always <laughs> going to think that, you know, the 90s yeah. is the best time. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I think the only thing, the only thing different is now, I mean, obviously everybody started putting a little curse words here and there, even in the nineties, yeah. but now it's like the whole damn song is going to you know, <laughs> catch your ass out the whole time. <laughs> So you can't always play that version, you know. <laughs> uh, are you still writing? Slash yeah. D- so, so you know, I had a an, a an an album that debuted number two behind Ariana. I would love if I could Ooh. have a Candy collaboration. I would love it. <laughs> when, what are we doing? Oh, uh, we, 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 you know what? We'll figure it out. We we gonna we gonna figure it out after this, and we gonna gag the children with some hot shit. That'd be dope. <laughs> So now Tristan here is the real hot of Atlanta. Like you said, you've been on Atlanta Candy since season two, over a decade. Stepping in season two, like looking back, were you like, this is like, I, I'll be here for a while. Or you were just planning no. just to make a quick little bibbity bop and, and be out. I thought it was just going to be something to do for the time being. I had yeah. no idea that that yeah. show would become such a major part of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, at that time, I just thought it was just, oh, yeah be cool to do it you know just for a second you know yeah. I didn't really what it like to be honest with you one of my homegirls when I told her I was gonna be on the show she was like what they want you on there for <laughs> <laughs> I was like I don't know but hell let's just something to do yeah. you know so it's just so funny to me now all these years later to be a part of that show and all the different spinoffs it's yeah. just crazy it's crazy well- and and then you know you had your first year drama, but this past season, I love how you switched. You were just uh, you were just spicing up the drama a little bit. They call you Salt Bay, and I like you in this role, Candy, because again, like Did I said, you? I, I, nobody I, I else love it. Oh, I love that. I they they just hating because they were in the drama. You were just you were just tiptoeing by, like I'm gonna add a little sass on hair. I'm gonna put a little black stuff right here. I'm gonna put the deal. <laughs> so, but again, I feel like with your aura and your personality. You like you are an HBIC, so I just love that you kind of overlook the drama and you put stuff, stuff together. And I like you in this role. I think I think it fits you well. Well, I appreciate it, but you know, <laughs> sometimes it's like even though we can always try to avoid drama at all costs, sometimes it just seems like drama may follow you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, You're trying to be in the midst of drama. You know, I found moments last season. Like, okay, like everybody was mad at me about Kenya stuff. And I'm like, Kenya is her own woman. Why you keep trying to be mad at me for her decisions? Like, leave me alone. But also rightfully so, because let me tell you something. I have had friends um try to plan surprises for me and another friend ruin it. With that mm-hmm. baby shower thing, I was right there with you. I'm like, we I'm like, why on earth would you ever go to her and do that? Like I was with you hundred percent. Oh, the proposal. So the way yeah, this, yeah, yeah, the, the proposal, baby Shara. Yeah. I was like, come on, girl. I was heated. And that's oh. it, it was so crazy because I didn't even know how to react in that moment. I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're my girl, but like, what? Like, <laughs> and this past season, we saw you, um, you know, you, you're you now in the shy. Congratulations, by the way, season three coming up. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's on right now. I'm <laughs> on right now, yeah. Every Sunday. Um, how 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 are you adjusting? I guess with you guys obviously finished filming before the the pandemic, but uh, how how is it um, having your newborn baby? Well, well, not newborn anymore, I guess. How many months are, are they now? Oh, she's eight months now. Eight months. Kind of late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's months. She'll be nine months soon. Yeah. yeah because so, so when on the show we saw you were you were kind of like handling this amazing role, and then but also being a mom. And how is that all working out for you now? Oh my God. Um, it's just, uh, for me, it's just like, uh, a blessing to be able to still do what I love doing, still yeah. have my family and the support of them being with me. It's like, I mean, Hey, uh, you know, some people will always be like, I mean, she need to be doing this. She need to be doing that. But it's like, if you can do it all, why not? Just go Absolutely. for it. Go for yeah. it. And I definitely have a very supportive family that helps me out, you know, that make sure that, you know, if, you know, if I'm not here, my husband is making sure things good. I have a friend and her name is Katrina. She always looks out for my kids. If, you know, if we can't be here at the time. So it always works out. Dope. And then, I mean, are you, how are you handling Zoom teaching? Are you, are you having to wake up at the crack of dawn, uh, have ACE in this uh, virtual class? Like, how is that? Child, a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> that Zoom is like wearing my ass out. Okay, so listen. Um, I definitely love that bonding time with Ace. Like, you know, I feel like 
I must be his fun teacher because he'd be like, mommy, mommy. You know, like if sometimes like if I say, well, let your daddy teach you today or whatever, she'd be like, no, I want you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So, you know, I, I actually, that was like one of my backup jobs. Like if I didn't make it, you know, you know how you always yeah. like, but like if I don't make it at this or what I really want to do then I used to say that I would be like a performing arts teacher or something like that so I, I could still, totally see that yeah so I could still you know have something I love and be involved with the kids and stuff so yeah. I actually like it but when he has to he also does um Mandarin that part is hard oh like like oh god yes yeah, yeah I, I can't like when the, the Mandarin <laughs> teachers Chinese teachers teaching Mandarin I'm just like uh yeah <laughs> Somebody else sit here because I don't even know it. So I'm like, you got to teach me. I don't know it. Right. Yeah. Can but you uh, are raising up a, a young. He gonna be speaking English, Spanish, Mandarin. See, that's how. See, mm, that's so. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Is he playing any instruments? Um, not yet. So, okay. like, I did have him in drum class. Um, but I felt like I put him in there a little bit too early. He was mm-hmm. only like two when I did it. And so he was liking it, but he just wasn't, he wasn't as old as the other kids in the class. So Got you. Now I can't take him. So, so I don't know what I'm going to do, but I want him to learn. Oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure the singer gene is probably going to be strong in ace. And would, would you, would, would you encourage a path in arts, in, um, in music? Or are you like, Oh, because you obviously have such a, long history with with entertainment would you push him another way no um if if this is something that he would want to do then i definitely would be supportive of it um i tried with riley she that just wasn't her thing <laughs> a lawyer and represent us but um with ace like he loves like he has his own youtube channel he asked for the channel he's like i want my own youtube channel <laughs> you know it's so funny to me like we don't really keep up with it like we should and he's like when am i gonna do my youtube video <laughs> like he's so serious about it so if y'all if y'all got kids please subscribe to his channel ace plays and giveaways child. Love, 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 love that now katie we had to talk about the mass singer first of all i am as you as you can probably tell i'm a candy stand so as soon as i, I didn't know 100 percent it was you but i was like 80 percent sure i'm like i think that's candy um, but you won season three and yes. you are the first woman to do so. How was, yes. how was, how was it? Um, the Mad Singer was an awesome experience. First of all, like it was so cool because they really take that secretive stuff seriously. Like yeah. nobody knows who the other person is. Like most of like the only person I had figured out while I was there was Bow Wow. Um, because I actually walked in backstage one time while he uh-huh. was on stage and I could hear his voice. Like normally they keep you separate. Like if somebody else is performing, you don't get to see them perform or anything, you know? So, oh, I thought y'all knew each, like, I thought, like, no. I, heard I was like, oh, they're just saying that. They have no, to no, 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 no. We definitely cool. do not know each other. All right, like we have our full costumes on. By the time we see each other, we don't speak. We don't say anything. We just standing there looking around each other with these costumes. Like, you have no idea who's in the other costume, you know? Dang. And so, um, and then you don't ever get to hear them perform unless right. they don't have, because they escort us back to our trailers when um the people are performing. But like I said, Dang. he just so happened to be finishing up his rehearsal when I was going back. So even though we're covered up even when we go to rehearsal. That is so yeah. crazy. But I know his voice. You know, right. he was on them, I was also like I know that. I know yeah, that yeah. So yeah, he was the only person I figured out. I did not even see anybody else until it aired on television. What? That, yes, I had to watch each, each week just to see the people as they were revealed. Oh, I'm Andy, so- I thought y'all, I was like, there's no way. I was like, they're all backstage no. playing spades, no. uh, playing heads up, chilling. Oh, really? No. Okay. Even wow. even at the very end um, with um, Turtle or whatever, like, you know, they see, you know, I won or whatever, and I, they show me going up to the judges, but uh-huh. in real life, they, I go up to the judges and they're like, okay, stop. Okay, take her away. Wow. <laughs> so I didn't get to see him revealed. So I didn't wow. even know who Turtle was until it aired. Well, congratulations. You did, I mean, every week after week. So, I mean, you're, yeah, you were phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. 
Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And this, I, oh, great. this has and been a bad year and a great year at the same time. Right. You started off the year at such with such an amazing moment. And then here we are in July. We can't even do this in studio. We have to do it through Google Meetups. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like when I tell you, like it was this, it was a dream come true for me to be on the show The Shy. I was a fan of the show. Right. You know, then I got the part to be on that show. You know what I mean? Then right after taping the shy, then I got to do tape, you know, mass singer or whatever. Yeah. And so like I knew those things were both gonna be coming on air. So I'm like, ooh, I know I knew I was gonna win, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, this, this year going to be lit. <laughs> I was planning on dropping music. I did drop a single, but I didn't even get to finish the album I was planning to do because Dang. it was right when um, everybody got stuck in quarantine. And I, I was like, it stopped, you know, I didn't stop going to the studio as much. You know what I mean? So I was like, but then I knew Shy was coming out. So I was like, I have all these great things happening, but at the same time, I really can't go nowhere. I know. <laughs> Which which is crazy, y'all, for that because uh, uh, allegedly you guys are filming right now, which I can only imagine. Just now started, in, yeah. Yeah, filming in during this whole pandemic. So that if, if that's not enough of a reason to watch, I can't tell people. You know, what I mean, it's gonna be really interesting watching y'all do this. You're right. I mean, it it is crazy. Um, you know, but the the network and the um, production company they are definitely following all protocols. Like we get tested every week. You know, they want to wow. make sure we safe. So you know. We're doing our thing in the midst of craziness. <laughs> Which a little birdie, aka a blog, allegedly Apollo is back on the season and him and Kenya are having a budding relationship? Child, who made that up? <laughs> really? I'll be making up stuff, I swear. Like, I'm not here to tell you who is or who ain't on the show, but I can definitely tell you that I ain't seen Apollo. <laughs> and I definitely ain't heard nothing about him and Kenya doing nothing. Like, that is such a made-up lie. Like, this lie sometimes crack me up when they be, like, making up stuff. It's just crazy. Like, like really? <laughs> um, I also want to congratulate you, Candy. Your post this year regarding the Supreme Court decision for um for the LGBT community, your post is so beautiful. Your words are so amazing, and I don't and to and for the younger kids seeing a beautiful, strong black woman like you doing that, I don't knowingly and unknowingly, you are helping so many people. So from the community, which I'm just a tiny little bit of the community, but thank you from all of us to you. Oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah. I just personally felt like I mean. I was happy. I was excited. So of course yeah. I'm gonna tweet. I, I post about what I'm excited about. So yeah. I'm glad they made that decision. Yeah. And before you go, I do want to let you know. Um, I am going on the website as soon as this is done to bedroom candy. I'm mm -hmm. putting it in order because I heard that there are some toys for the girls. So I need to um Yes, there are. First oh, of all, like we have a lot of great great products for everyone. You know what I mean? And I always try to like make sure people know that. But we got products for everybody. It's not no specific group. It's for everybody. everybody. So anyway, but um, some of our really cool LGBTQ friendly products, like we have this harness for the Ooh. ladies. For the ladies. The harness. The ladies who love ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we have a harness. That's called Matchmaker. And it um, holds um, two of our um, our extra parts. I don't know what all I can say on your show. Oh, no, oh, oh, pussy, dick, everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I ain't know if I had to be kind of like, you know. <laughs> okay, so yeah. one is called Simple Pleasures and one is called Deep Delight. So depending on how deep, depending on how deep you want to go. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> okay. So my girls, we have a, um, oh, we have a tea, a lube for our trans um, men. And Ooh, it's, word. Yes, we do, because we know that sometimes there's periodic dryness due to testo um, testosterone and hormone replacement. Yeah. So that is made just for, you know, for them. <laughs> Candy, uh, I love you. Thrust. Oh, this is what I love. Thrust is a vibrating, um, it's just an anal toy. It's, it's just to give some anal stimulation, um, but it's so great. Okay. Oh, Candy. <laughs> Um, after this, I'm going to send you an Insta DM so you can tell me what the names are because I will be making some purchases 
because quarantine is a lot of self-love and I need a lot of self-love for myself. You know what? Let me tell you. Bedroom Katie's been doing so amazing in these last couple months. It's crazy because I thought, like, I thought, you know, being in quarantine, I was like, oh, people aren't going to go to the bedroom candy parties, whatever, whatever. But then, you know, we start coming up with all these fun um, online parties and different things that we were doing. And when I tell you we've done huge numbers in quarantine. Wow. That's crazy. I was like, okay, everybody must want to have some good love on their sales time. <laughs> like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Katie, I had from March 13th until the first day of liberations, I want to say uh, it was June something, June 8th, blah, blah, blah. literally the morning that we were allowed to be back in the wilderness. I I called my little quarantine uh, bay. I was chatting with, I was like, come over at 7 a.m. I will be nice and ready to go. I miss human to human contact. And it was on and popping. But throughout quarantine, you know, you got to take care of yourself. You got to. Yeah. Got to. I don't have <laughs> Candy, this has been so amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by and chatting. You are a queen. I stand. And we're going to make some music together. I'm, 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 I'm going to let the Lord work and the Lord move. And I believe it. And it's going to happen. So you said when you dropped your album, when did you drop it? Oh, I dropped it February 16, 2019. And it was oh, right when Ariana had dropped her projects. I was number two right behind Ariana. I was like, couldn't she wait another week or two? Well, that's <laughs> when I came out of the Big Brother's house. Mm -hmm. And I actually, she sampled my song that I did for NSYNC, and it was number one, the song that she had at the time I was coming out of the Big Brothers album. Work. So when you dropped your album, and I dropped too, work. <laughs> <laughs> Won't he do it? Hey, he, he gonna do it. I'm gonna send you some links so you can hear a little bit of the vibe. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Kendi, Kendi, thank you so much, my dear. Be safe. Um, take care of your beautiful kids, and I'm sure I'll see you soon. Well, when this is all over, please come back to the studio. It's so much more fun in the studio. We got a cocktail. We play games. It's a riot. Okay, let's do it. Okay, cool. Thank you, my love. Bye. Bye. We always get asked in the comments where our theme song is from. Well, do y'all even watch the show, Tamar? It's my original music, girl. Here's a sneak peek of There For You from my at-home session debuting on YouTube tomorrow at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh. So funky. Hey y'all, it's your girl Monet Exchange here and welcome to my lovely two-bedroom New York City apartment. Um, I am here for a little at-home session with this amazing guitarist, Jeff Matthew. Life has been a wild ride since Drag Race, but one of the best gifts I've received in the show is getting the opportunity to work with amazing um, songwriters and singers and creating my own music. And I'm super excited to bring this little home session to y'all. I hope y'all enjoy it and I hope we uh, do something for y'all. So... Without further ado, let's start. Uh-huh. This is so funky. I live. These nails, too. I feel like I'm talking right to them. <laughs> Would you be there the way I'm there for you? I wonder if you're there like I'm down for you. Would you really cry for me? Said you put it on the line for me But I got to say respectfully Something makes me feel like you're there for you, you There for you There for you, you, you There for you Thought we were looking out for each other But you ain't gonna be there tomorrow With heartache and sorrow Damn, you are a heart built to swallow Something makes me feel like you're not the truth Stab me in the back, but you never shoot, shoot. Would you really cry for me? Said you put it on the line for me, but I got to say respectfully, something makes me you, 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 there for you, there for you, 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 there for you, there for you, 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 there for you, there for you, 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 there for you. Thought we were looking out for each other, but you ain't gonna be there tomorrow. Fill me up with 
Damn, you are a hard pill to swallow You, there for you Only you Only you There for you Only you There for you now listen, I know everybody watching this has had a shady ex-boyfriend, shady ex-girlfriend, shady non-binary person messing with you. Tell them this. Thought we were looking out for each other, but you ain't gonna be there tomorrow. You're there for you, not for me, only you, there for you, only you. Uh huh. Only you. Just you. You ain't checking for me. You were there just for yourself. I mean, that's the tea. You would just be like, you were only there for you, not there for me. Honestly, y'all, listen, I'm not going to waste no more precious moments on this intro because I'm so happy to finally have my sister here. Welcome. My girl, Miss Cracker. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Crack attack. First of all, I am obsessed with this whole. So y'all don't know, Cracker literally built this set for this interview. I did. I did. <laughs> I'm trying to give you American Horror Story Kevin out on the veranda. Girl, just, just flossing. <laughs> I love that you have the fans. It's probably so hot outside. I yeah, I am. There's no air conditioning in the house that I'm at, and so it's coolest outside, but it is still a blazing 87 degrees, and I am oh. smelting. This well, is, you know me. Is... I have a hard thought, and I'm just like literally a puddle of water, <laughs> so I can't imagine. Oh, exactly. <laughs> She's like, two times four is, oh no, here goes the makeup. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It is not cameo weather, all right? <laughs> so, Crack, so everyone's, everyone's like, when is Cracker coming? When is Cracker coming? As soon as the cast is announced, and, you know, I had heard through the grapevine that you on, I was like, I want Cracker to be the last queen that we do. Well, well, we were supposed to have you a while back, but then COVID happened, and then yeah. so we had to switch things around, and I was like, well, I want Cracker to be the final All-Stars 5 queen, because, right. A, the world knows my love for you, and we just gonna have a, a good old girl chat. Just a sister act. I'm so into it. Yeah, no, it's true. I remember, like, um, very... I'll wait. Um, I remember very early on, you were you did this interview, and they're like, who do you want to see on, see on All Stars 5? And you were like, Miss Cracker. And I was, like, very choked up. I was the puddle, girl. I was Aww. just... I was like, it made me so... I was like, I was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Well, for those who know, Crack and I worked for years in New York City together. We had a show, Turn It On Sundays, which we started off on this, like, concept. We were like, we're going to be fierce. We're going to every week make up this, like, PowerPoint presentation of videos. <laughs> Bitch, we lasted for a few months. We were like, all right, so let's just do a regular show. We're Especially done. because no. for the first year that we did the show, we were doing it for ourselves and maybe one drunk person. <laughs> so we're like, I'm not doing a PowerPoint presentation for nobody. <laughs> were you asked to do AS4 cracks? I don't remember. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I may have been, and I was like, I'm not ready emotionally. Yeah. I'm yeah. not I, yeah. I don't feel like a star yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still broke from season 10, like, please. <laughs> but you jumped right in, and, like, I'm imagining that now, I can't imagine jump, jumping right back in, girl. girl you walked off the lot. stage from Elimination Day and <laughs> back into the work room to do. You're like... <laughs> ah! So, the cast of All Stars 5 gets revealed, and I'm not gonna lie, Cracker, from the, from the beginning, I was like, it's gonna be Cracker and Shane the top two, which... Um, like, surprise, any, if anyone knew, <laughs> obviously that's what it was. Um, <laughs> Thank you. How was, how do you feel like your overall experience in All Stars was? I mean, it was so intense, but um, like any season is, like filming anything is, it was like, at first it was a wild ride, but then Juju gave me the secret. She mm. was like, if you feel stressed out, that's correct, because that's what they're trying to make you feel. So if you're feeling stressed out, then 
you're doing it correctly. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh. Yeah. So from then on, every time I got stressed out, I was like, that's fine. That's how it's supposed to be. And yeah. it really it really made the difference. So I think that was the big thing. The big thing about the whole season was Juju because she was like my spiritual guide. Yeah. The whole thing. And, yeah. And I, I agree. Like going back, like I was so happy to have people like Naomi. Like Naomi was like my tether to be like, bitch, you got this turn it out and like vice versa like we were doing that for each other so yeah. having someone there people don't understand that we were like that for season 10 season 10 we were just like girl you got this when i was in the bottom yes. you would come over and coddle me and i i never had to do that for yeah. you because you were always on top um so <laughs> you were constantly like monet you got this girl and i was like thank you correct all right no thank you thank you so it's good to have someone that like did that help like I, you did um like when you did get discouraged it did helped me to see because I was like, oh my God, I know Monet is a fierce queen. So if she's discouraged, then this is really hard. And um, I I was like, there's no way that Monet is not a great queen. So I guess everybody is going to get discouraged no matter how great they are. And like that, that helped. I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only one, you know? So it was nice to have you there. We we finally got our wig lesson session that we've been waiting for <laughs> on set. <laughs> on set, I've been I was like, a cracker for a month." I was like, "Cracker," and, and, and she was like, "Yeah, come on over, girl. I'll teach you." And I'm always like, "Oh yeah, I can't today. My silver <laughs> hurts." And then finally, on the set of Drag Race, my elimination episode, I'm like, "Cracker, can you teach me how to tease that wig?" Yes. <laughs> I was like, "This is called hairspray." <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, oh, so, Greg, so we go to season two. I mean, uh, uh, episode two, we, we yeah. find out that you told on Gina, like, you you, you, liked, you were like, girl, I think you should go home. And, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm processing because, again, I've been there twice on Drag Race. I get it. Like, when you see yeah. someone who isn't as, like, like as so passionate about it as you, it yeah. gets you. You're like, bitch, I literally would kill my grandmother to win this competition. And you're like, oh, I guess I just didn't do well. I guess I should go home. Like, I get it. Why were people yeah. so mad at that? I don't know. I guess what I did learn is that, you know, it's always good to tell the truth, but you just have to think about what people want to hear over their cereal in the morning. And like Angina is like just waking up and I'm like, guess what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, there's nothing wrong with telling the truth. It's just like all in the timing. And yeah. since then, um, you know, she and I have talked it through and um, really just, I think it took us a while, but I was yeah. like, look, I've been through this with other girls too. And I've been on the opposite side of this. So like, let's figure this out because what happens on the set of drag race should stay on the set of drag race. At the end of the day, we should be sisters. And I was like, what we do when we're under pressure is a lot different than what we do in our regular day-to-day life. So I was like, let me show you who I am on a regular day-to-day thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And then, which is something that really got me about Blair, Blair, Okay, so there was, like, the show built up this, like, weird tension between you and Blair, but it didn't make any sense to me as a viewer watching it because yeah. I know that uh, during t- uh, after season 10, like, when we were touring together, you and Blair, y'all were friends, y'all were talking, yeah. like, y'all were, like, cool, y'all were really cool. So it was so crazy to me to watch Blair say these things, like, you were egotistical, and it was just so... Yeah. How is watching that? Because in for all intents and purposes, I thought y'all were homegirls, y'all were cool, y'all were friends. Yeah. The thing is, it it is so weird. And like, especially because even after the season, Blair and I are talking on the phone, like sharing our emotions and stuff like that. And it's just like, when you watch it, you just have to understand, oh, this is what we're like when we have no sleep and we're under the most pressure in the entire world. Like, so it's just a different you. It's you. Like, it really is you. And it really did happen. Like, they can't, they don't, I believe me. I've seen their craft services table. They do not have the budget to CGI any <laughs> fake scenes together. But um, it, it is really what happened, but it's just like, it's you at your most strained and stressed. And I think that's what I would like all fans to know. Mm-hmm. And I would like all queens that are watching the season to know, because before you've been on, when you're watching it, you're like, oh, I would do that easy. And I would yeah. never say that, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, wait till 
you have not seen a pillow in four days. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, because you get done and you're practicing your lip syncs um, in your room by yourself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's like, yeah, it's just a different world. You can't yeah. judge it till you've been there. But, but but you and Blair are cool now because fans yeah. fans watch the show and they're like, oh, on China and Cracker they hate each other. Oh, Blair hates Cracker. Cracker hates Blair. They're not friends. But just to shut the yeah. straight, y'all are cool. Yeah, I have my uh, Blair St. Clair uh, certified hair. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I okay. like I've we have actually Blair has been one of the most supportive people over the last couple of weeks of the show because it was just like you get so much stress. Mm -hmm. um just from watching yourself and she was one of the people that was like i'm in the same place um so don't feel alone and yeah that's that's the reality and then reality yeah. tv is different you know right yeah and now cracker three challenge wins you had the most challenge wins i think you did a really good job in the final episode your verse was good your um your choreo looks stunning I, okay I, I shave her little head cartwheel thing you know they try to get us to do that shit in all stars four I said, absolutely not. If I do that, I will snap someone's neck off, okay? Yes. I was like, no, I can't do that shit, Todd. No. Uh, but I, you had a really good showing in the in, in the in the final, in the production number, and you had a great final runway. Like, in the months after, were you confident that you would have sieged the win? Girl, no queen uh, walks away from being in the top without being certain. Do you know, every right. queen yeah. is like, oh, <laughs> I better get my, I better stretch my bank account because she's going to have to hold some extra money. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I've already, I like made a, one of those uh, iPhone notes thing. And I was like, things that I'm going to buy. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to treat myself. Yeah. Um, like, but at the same time, the problem is that um, I was going up against two of like, my favorite people in the world yeah. and they're incredibly talented. So every few minutes through my delusion, I would be like, Oh, wait a second. Those girls are fierce too. Yeah. I, that's why, that's why I think you work so hard when you're in, in the top two, top three, because you like, I better put out a music video. I better mm -hmm. do the shoots. I better show people that I can do something great because these other girls are great too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was confident, but I also knew I had to work my ass off if I yeah. was going to be, if I, I wanted to earn a place next to Shay and Juju. You know. Now, um, you won a comedy, well, you won three challenges, but one of them was a comedy challenge. And I know to you it was super important because you are a comedy queen. People know yeah. it to be really funny. And um, did it, and, and coming off of our season, you had one challenge win, I had zero. But you had one. <laughs> so was that very important to you to win that comedy challenge to show people, bitch, e look, even these motherfucking judges know I'm funny. Yeah. Well, I was like, I went on season 10 like, <laughs> I'm the comedy queen of New York. Look out, Bianca Del Rio. And uh, I, that just didn't pan out. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. I, what I wanted more than anything was to, like, make good on my promise. And so, yeah, that was the most important win for me like if i had to choose one to keep that would be the one and i just yeah. wanted the judges to be able to see what it's like to be at one of my shows yeah um and i feel like i did that so i was like after i was done you never know which way it's gonna go with the judges but i was like no matter what they say i feel like i gave them the material uh, I gave, yeah i gave them me you know and yeah. so if they don't like it then they don't like me but at least it was me you know, I yeah, girl, you, you gave them you gave them enough material to make Latrice Royale a gal. Okay, you <laughs> gave them you came through, girl. There's no way. <laughs> yes, a little something for the cutting room floor, darling. Yeah. <laughs> Which ties in perfectly with your tour, your American Woman tour. So, like a lot of the live shows, even our tour, like it was your your show was canceled this year because of COVID. Um, yeah, and but it's reannounced for next year. Yeah. That's right. And I was going to do uh, She's a Woman before, which was my show I was touring, but I've been done, done doing that show for almost two years now. So I was mm -hmm. like, the kids deserve something that is brand new. Mm. And so what I'm doing up here, I'm upstate right now at an artist residence, is writing um, a, a brand new show. And it's going to be different from any other show. Oh, um, work. It's going to be all original music. 
and um, all original comedy. So it's all mine because guess what? I can't pay for the rights to any of my dance numbers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, you're running a brand new show right now? I'm writing a brand new show. Work, I'm like, girl. I wish I had my my note cards with me. I'm just like going through all my notebooks and collecting all the jokes that are good. And some of them are like, uh, grandma's dead. That's off my list. I'm like, I don't know what that joke is. That doesn't have to go on the show. Um, <laughs> just, just like, I was like looking at that. I was like, what? Um, but yeah, so I'm. Um, pulling together all of the my notes that I've collected over the years and I'm making it into an hour comedy special which is different oh than anything I've god, done oh my god Greg see yeah. the, the, here's the thing I know so many friends that are being so productive during quarantine when I am literally sitting at home yes I'm very I'm doing this show which I love so much and a podcast but outside of that I'm sitting on my couch eating general style chicken and pork fried rice and watching Judge Judy while you're riding a fucking original music in a show. I need to get my life together. Patty, Now, let's be work. clear. Let's be clear about this, because I want you to know that during the airing of the season, I did nothing <laughs> at all. I didn't, I didn't even get groceries. I ordered every single one of my meals, and I sat in my kitchen, and I stared at the floor until it got dark, and then I went back to bed. Like, I didn't, I didn't read. I didn't write anything. I did nothing for a solid two months. So the fact that I'm writing something now is very is is a it's different. I did the yeah. General So's chicken moment <laughs> um, in my life, and uh, it was actually sesame chicken. But um, oh my god, I, I said General So, but I meant sesame, and I get right? extra sesame okay. seeds, and I get there a fried extra crispy. But that's yeah. neither here nor there. I like something that that looks the same coming out the other side as it does. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I crack is there anything else you want to set the record straight about L Stars 5? Uh well, I don't want to set anything straight, but I do want to say that um I just had such a fun time. Yeah. Um and I feel like I like on the main stage got to show uh who I was, you know, what mm -hmm. I can do, and that's really what I wanted to do. Um and besides that, just getting to be alongside uh, Shay and Juju and Blair, um, it just feels like it was such a strong group. Yeah. I, I, while I was going on, like while it was playing on, while well, it was playing, what do you call it, airing? Um, <laughs> I was like, please make it stop. But um, now, <laughs> it's, now it's over, I'm like, oh, let's go around again. Let's do it. You know? <laughs> right? Isn't that the Z? When it's yeah. here, you're like, oh, God, I could never do this again. Literally, yeah. they call me the next day. I was like, sign me up! <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're yeah. like, I have more self-respect. I'm bigger than RuPaul's Drag Race, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then the phone rings. You're like, I'll be there, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, do you see yourself maybe doing All-Star season 12, season 11 or some shit? Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, during the season, I would say absolutely not. But, you know, if they want to juju me, fine. You know, if, like, <laughs> if they want a top two queen for All Stars 8, then uh, <laughs> here she is. <laughs> Correct. I cannot. We, 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 we went on one social distance walk uh, when, yeah. during Corona. And when you come back, we should get lunch or something. Cracker yeah. has opened me up to so many fierce um, African restaurants. Up in up in uh, our neck of the woods. So yeah. please take me somewhere else. You always inform. You always yeah. fierce, and I love you so much. I love you so much, and thank you so much for being like such a support for me. Like taking me on that walk and saying nice things about me, and I I just like each. I notice each one of those things. They're not just like going out into the empty air. I'm like at home, ugly crying over them. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being a wonderful sister or auntie, whatever people think you are. <laughs> I know. People are so confused about our drag <laughs> family. So for yeah. the kids at home, Cracker is Bob's drag daughter, but but uh, just because Bob and, Bob and I aren't, aren't drags, I guess we are drag sisters, but yeah. Cracker and I are sisters. I'm not Cracker's auntie. How old do you think I am? I know Cracker <laughs> looks 12, but she's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm like just like an each one teach one big brother, big sister. Like, like you know, like. Very that. So, yeah. Very that. I love you so much, Mom. I love you too, Cracks. And I'll talk to you very soon. I'll see you when I get back. And listen, you you can you can write any mean material about me. You know I love people making fun of me, and you're so funny. I can't wait to hear it. 
Okay, now it's an hour and 15 minute show. All right, great. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, bitch. I'm ending the call. (laughs) Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is always this has been an amazing show with great guests. And um to continue to to continue the conversation about Brianna, if you're looking for more ways to help, I'm gonna put a little um, banner at the end of this episode and you can get some more information on how you or, or what you can do to further um, justice for Brianna. Again, thank you, and until next time, remember to always keep your currency in check.